Radio, a constantly changing art form. London, the two hour ultimatum have been delivered to Germany. Rock and roll. The Prairie Home Companion. Hello, everybody, and welcome. From that first broadcast, a medium that has been pruned, honed, trimmed, winnowed, chiseled, bonsai, and deposited here today, ready to be moistened with the watering can of evolutionary dew, this is the Dennis Miller Show. Hey folks, welcome to the Dennis Miller Show. I am the aforementioned Mr. Miller. I'm a pig and slop, two of the best friends we have here on the radio show. Carl's been with us for three hours. We're joined from Philly by uh, author Gene Beretta. Gino, how you doing, baby? You've done a lot with the play since I've been here. <laughs> I was watching uh, the rock and roll induction last night, and uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates finally got in, and they were talking about Philly, and they said they're the only band who came from Philly who's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Really? Wow. And he said, uh, what about, you know, he said, when are you going to put Todd Rundgren in? And I thought, wow, that shocks me that Todd Rundgren yeah, is for sure. in. At least Chubby Checker's not in. Wow. At least as a producer, even, Todd Rundgren. Rund- Rundgren. There's no deal. No, there. definitely is a, anything. You got to put the run in, and uh, the, yeah. the Deltones, and the, you know, none of those guys from the beginning. So the doo-wop period yeah. is huge. I mean, oh, that was the Sigma birthday. Sound. The whole Philly sound from the seventies. Is that what the yeah. Sun Studios was in Philly? Signal yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nobody in except Hall and Oates. And the first thing there, Hall said was, can, "Can I get some propers for Philly?" Of course, everybody else in there from New Hampshire. Um, yeah, yeah, that big, lumberjack big music. rock up there. <laughs> yeah, big music state. Um, Gene and uh, Carl are going to be with us for the entire hour. In our next segment, we're going to talk to musician Kenny Wayne Shepherd about his new album, "Going Home." Also, take a lot of your phone calls. They're lit up. Why don't we take one? There's our good friend, Lynn B. in Indiana. What's up, sweetheart? You know what? You got great people on the air today. This is so much fun. I, Carl, Carl is on my fall list for my trip to meet the DMC. Uh, Gene and I got to spend some time together last summer. So um, these are great friends I've made through you, Dennis. I, I'm very, uh, very blessed, very lucky, and like I said, these are the these are the glory days. You, you Thank still, you, Lynn B. You still owe me for parking, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he never forgets. And Lynn, uh, be sure to get in touch when you come up uh, northeast. We'll uh, we'll give you the grand tour up there. Okay, doll. I love about Lynn is she is an optimist. I, I'm 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 usually a. I wouldn't say I'm a pragmatist, and I don't see it as great right now. But no. some people do, and I'm happy for them. And I, I, I wish sometimes, but uh, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Eight six six five zero nine ran our phone number. Eight six six five zero nine seven two six eight. We'll continue to take calls throughout the hour. We're joined by our friend Gene Beretta, author from Philly. We're going to check up on what he's written recently. Gene's always got a great kids book, and Carl's on. Just our dear friend, and uh, nice of him to come down and share the time with us. First up, though. Kenny Wayne Shepherd's got a new album, Going Home, and we'll talk about it. Listen to it right after this Dennis Miller show. Dennis Miller shed. show. <laughs> Kenny, it's a bit Wayne, of a shed. Kenny Wayne Shepherd's new album, Going Home, is now available. This, the estimable Mr. Shepherd. What's shaking? How you doing, man? Young kid with a dream. How are you doing, baby? You happy with the the, the disc? Yeah, I'm 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 feeling pretty good, you know. It debuted uh, last week at the number twenty five on the Billboard Top Two Hundred and number one on the Billboard Blues charts, and that's pretty good for a traditional blues album. Wow, that's great, baby. You get to be true to your school and still score. So that's gotta feel yeah. good. Yeah, it's good and you know, it's the first album of my own that I produce by myself. So, you know, there's lots of reasons for me to to be happy about it and mm. uh 
you know, musically, it's me going back to my roots, which is blues music. You know, I grew up in Louisiana, and uh, my first concert, I saw Muddy Waters and John Lee Hooker when I was three years old, and I've been a blues fan ever since. Where'd you go away to, brother, that you're coming back to it? I mean, usually well, you get you the... you know, man, I like to push blues into different directions, so mm -hmm. some of my albums I experiment, and I go a little more into a rock direction, um, you know, or I go and I'll play on other people's records and do, you know, like I played on a Kid Rock album or a Willie Nelson's record or, you know, stuff like that. And I branch out and, and I try and take blues and, and, and push the boundaries of it. But my fans always love it when we go back, right back to the kind of traditional blues. Yeah, yeah to the essence. Kenny Wayne yeah. Shepard's new album is Going Home. He's now available. And I think Kenny Wayne's on an 11-day sojourn on an ass-busting uh, tour schedule over this. And heading, heading back home to Shreveport, Louisiana. I uh, I think you can talk to musicians and you can dig their stuff. And I want to dig their stuff. I know we've got a song called You Can't Judge a Book by Its Cover. Let's sit back and listen for a while and then we'll chat to Kenny about it. Can you see a square guitar in my mind's eye. That's an old Bo Diddley song, isn't it, Kenny? Yeah, man. That was, originally it was done by Bo Diddley, and yeah, you know, I have some history with him. The first time I did a tour with B.B. King, uh, I was 15 years old, and I was opening up the show, and then Bo Diddley played next, and then B.B. played last. But Bo Diddley was one of those old school guys, like Chuck Berry, who mm. didn't like to tour with his own band, so he would u normally use local musicians, but they asked me and my band to be his backup band, so we would do our set, and then after that, we'd come out and we would back up Bo Diddley for his set, and I spent a lot of time with him on that tour, and he left a big impression on me, so we recorded that song in his honor. Believe it or not, in my long circuitous showbiz route, I opened for a couple times as a comedian for the great Chuck Berry, and Chuck oh, yeah. would say, "Chuck would say, I want the cash, I want the cash in a paper grocery bag, or I don't go on." Uh, he right. was in the car, and he had like a cab waiting for him. <laughs> the entire show. And he was he a piece of work. The last note, he would jump in the cab and disappear. <laughs> it was funny. He was, it was funny, man. I remember those old cats when you'd work with them. They had boiled showbiz down. I said to Patty LaBelle once, what do I need to know about showbiz? She said, always transfer your wallet to your stage outfit. <laughs> 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 so you know they came up through some hard times. Kenny Wayne Shepherd's new album, Going Home, is now available. Kenny's website Website, Kenny Wayne Shepherd dot net. You can follow him on Twitter at KW Shepherd. For more information on these tour dates that are coming this summer, go to Kenny Wayne Shepherd dot net. Um, I've got some friends in the studio. One of them knows more about music than anybody I know, and I was wondering if I could put uh, my friend Gene from Philly over to ask you a question, Kenny Wayne. Sure. Gino, go ahead, baby. Shoot. Hey, Kenny. Uh, you must feel like you walked on Mount Everest, having now worked with the greatest drummer to ever smack the skins, Ringo. Yeah. Well, what was that know, like? I've Ringo now uh, for, more, I guess, going on about 11 years. And uh, I actually played on his record that came out, uh, his last album, which was called 2012, and it came out in 2012. And uh, I played on two songs on that, and so he returned the favor by playing... Um, one song on this record and you know man i mean obviously it doesn't get any better than that he's tremendously talented amazing drummer and he's a great person like i very, feel very fortunate to be able to call him a friend beyond just actually being able to play with him he's a good friend and and he's somebody i have a lot of respect for well, maybe you'll end up in the all-star band one tour yeah, you never know. I certainly wouldn't say no. No, that'd be cool. I just saw uh, Ringo and Joe Walsh at that 50th anniversary thing, and Joe Walsh all cleaned up, feeling thankful. He's been cleaned up for years, but I'm saying he wailed that night, man. Is he on the album, too? 
Yeah, Joe's on it. He plays on a Muddy Water song we did called uh, uh, I Love the Life I Live. And uh, I've known Joe, again, like these guys, i got a lot of history with them. I, I opened up for the Eagles. I graduated high school, no. and my first album came out, and I went and did the entire European tour with the Eagles when they first got back together and did the Hell Freezes Over tour. So I've known Joe since I was 17. Well, I'll tell you what, Kenny, those old guys smell chops or lack thereof, and they only let a certain amount of kids into the Sanctum Sanctorum. Every time I see Christina Aguilera, I sometimes don't get the showbiz part of it. But I see those old brothers sidling up to play with her, and I go, they they know she's got the chops, man. And I assume the same is with you. Kenny Wayne Shepherd going home, now available. Like I said, you want to find out more information on tour dates, I'll think KennyWayneShepherd.net. Thanks for your time today, brother. Thank you very much, man. Have a nice summer. All right. Kenny Wayne Shepard, look at Gene stepping up and being all Don Cornelius about it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dennis. Gino, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm obviously one of the biggest Beatle fans in the world, but you, the biggest that I know. And what, I don't know if you know enough about music, I know you know enough about listening to it. Why was Ringo so great? Was there something in drum terminology or something, some uh, approach he took to it? Uh, you know, like uh, when you say John Bottom to me, I think Thumper. Turn right. the sticks around, beat really the hell hard. out of it. Uh, Peter Noon always says to me, listen, I knew the Beatles when Peter Best was in it, and it didn't congeal till Ringo mm-hmm. got there. What's he bring just as an artesian, a craftsman? I think he's a composer as well with his drums. There's... There's a guy on the internet now who plays all of Ringo's parts above the the mix of the sound. So you hear every part that he's playing. And it's like he never plays the same thing twice. Every fill is a little different. He has a, he has a um, signature fill because he's left-handed playing a right-handed kit. And there's a fill that he does that people can't duplicate because he's playing a right-handed kit being left-handed. And just any, you know... He's one fourth of the Beatles' recordings. Mm-hmm. Without those drum parts, they would be very different songs. So, so he's just not tagging along. He's uh, no. They they huge. wanted him in the band. They were big fans of his back in Hamburg. He was the hot drummer back in those days. Richie. Yeah.